This week, the astrophotography community suffered the loss of Alan Wallace, photographer, educator, engineer, and friend. This video is dedicated to his memory. This is a Nomad Star Tracker from Mushu Move. Now I've been able to use it extensively with a bunch of different lenses and I've compiled over nine hours of data to help us see exactly how good this little star tracker is at following the stars. This little tracker has been so much fun. I've used it in my backyard and backpacking like 10 miles from a train stop that was about 15 miles from the nearest town. So I've had it in every different shooting situation possible. And I've used a wide variety of lenses, everything from the seven millimeter Olympus lens all the way to this 200 millimeter Canon lens. So we're gonna go over the data today to see just how good this little tracker does. If you wanna pick up the Nomad or anything else from Move Shoot Move, follow the links down in the description of this video and also use the code Alex at checkout. And if you want to buy one of these shirts, this is my Cosmic Colorado hoodie. You can also get t-shirts and phone cases. There's links down below for those and that's helping to support my 14ers project. So thank you so much for that. My setup for doing most of my tracking is just what we see here. So I have my Benro three-way geared head attached to my Suray 284 tripod. On top of that, I have my Nomad mounted and I'm using my polar scope as well as my laser. So that's my favorite way of aligning is getting that rough alignment with the laser, then fine tuning it with the scope. On top of my Nomad, I really like using the V plate from Alan Wallace. And then on top of that, I set my ball head. This V plate is nice because it just provides a level surface for your ball head to sit on. Yes, you can use just a ball head without the V plate, but I really like this, especially for shooting panoramas. This is the best setup I've found and it's what I've used for the majority of the exam we're going to look at. So I've made this chart that tracks the different lenses I've been using as well as the different times I've been shooting for and I've combined all the data to help us get a better feeling here. So the first lens that we're going to look at is this 35 millimeter 1.8. This is a really nice kind of broad focal length for like the Milky Way or super broad for Orion, but this lens has been giving me some really nice results. This chart shows on the left is the time that I've tracked for, and that is the time in seconds, and that top bar is the different lenses, and then the details like where it says under RF35, uh, 120 seconds where it says eight out of eight. That means that this little lens on this tracker recorded eight photos and eight of them were usably um, no star trails. Down one layer below that, it, 180 seconds, we saw we had a 14 out of 15 perfect usable photos. So that is how we're going to understand this little chart here. This, now on this lens and on that RP, which is what I use most of these lenses on, this uh, tracker had a 92.3% hit rate for those different time values. So that is really nice, especially when we're getting into those really long times, like 480 seconds, it still had a 100% success rate. So that's a really good indication there. Moving over to the RF50. This has become one of my favorite lenses in the world for all sorts of different photography, but Absolutely, it is great at night. Now, the issue with it is it's a 1.2 lens, so it's starting to get kinda heavy. And I think the weight of this lens is gonna start to be an issue for the Nomad, but let's see how it did. At 60 seconds, we had eight out of 10 photos. At 120 seconds, we had 25 out of 30 photos. And at 360 seconds, we had three out of four photos. We're perfectly, perfectly sharp. So not too bad of a job, especially tracking those really long exposures. Next up, we have our 85 millimeter 2.0. This lens is a lot lighter than the 50, especially because it has that F2 aperture and it's not the L line. So it's just not made with as much heavy duty material, but it is really nice again for tracking the stars. I really love the images you can get of Orion using this focal length. Now I took this out last night and I set it up in my front yard and I was able to get 120 second images and this recorded 
28 out of 30 of them perfectly. Now, as you can see in these images, it was super cloudy, so I wasn't able to stack them and get a really nice final image, but I was able to use these eight to create this stacked shot, so not too bad. The next one we're going to talk about is this a 200 millimeter lens. Now this lens is one of my favorite lenses to use for that more deep space photo work. It's not exactly a telescope length, but it does reach out and you can grab some up close and personal shots of Orion and of the Pleiades and different things like that. So for this, I took it out to my backyard and I set it up again for 73 photos at 60 seconds each. And here we got 54 of 73 images were tack sharp, perfect, and good to use to stack. Now that is not a bad success rate. We can see it's about 74%. So about three out of four images was really, really good. And I'm happy with that because this little tracker doesn't have that counterweight system. It's not made for really doing deep space and it still got us some pretty nice results. But the results I'm most interested in is when I use the camera I'm photographing on, the OM Systems OM-1, and this little lens, the seven to 14 millimeter. I use this as my only uh, astro lens when we went up to Chicago Basin on that insane backpacking trip because I wanted the variety of this lens. So it goes from a 14 millimeter equivalent to a 28 millimeter equivalent. So you can really get a nice different uh, selection of images. So I was using this on that one crazy night. And if you want to watch more about that, click on this video here and it performed perfectly on the Nomad. And what's really interesting about that is I didn't even bring the polar scope with me. I was just aligning with the laser. Now I was not really pushing my exposures, but as you can see, set, setting this to 10 millimeters, I was able to get three out of three perfectly track shots at 240 seconds. So perhaps it's the weight, the OM system and this uh, lens is a bit, definitely a bit lighter than my full frame camera in this 1.2, but whatever happened that night was pretty perfect because I didn't have one throwaway image. Looking at the overall of these stats from all of these different lenses, I analyzed 249 different images and out of those 249, 215 of them were perfectly useful for an 86.3% average. Now keep in mind that is everything from seven millimeters to 200 and it, it rounded out to mid eighties for success rate. So I think that is pretty good. If you'd like personal help setting up your Nomad tracker, your camera, getting more ideas for post-processing, anything like that, I'm running one-on-one -on -one Zoom workshops and there's more information down below and we can meet on the computer and go over anything photography related. Now, what do we really learn from this data? Well, we learned that the Nomad's a capable tracker, even with that 200 millimeter lens on. Now, if I was more interested in doing a lot of deep space work and I wasn't gonna be hauling this tracker all over the planet, I would definitely be shooting with my Skywatcher Star Adventure for those longer lenses. But anything under perhaps like 135, I didn't test exactly 135, but you can see the jump from the 85 to the 200 is pretty significant. I was getting about 94% success at 85 millimeters, and then it dropped down to about 74% success at 200 millimeters. So I think right around 85 to 135 is where you're gonna notice the biggest difference moving from this compact star tracker up to something more substantial and with that counterweight system. So maybe this could help answer your question over which uh, tracker you wanna buy. If you're happy with just shooting wide angles like 35 millimeters or 24 millimeters, the Nomad is just as good as something like the Skywatcher, but when you want to go a little bit deeper, the larger tracker definitely makes sense. So what you do with this information, I guess, is kind of up to you. I am glad that I took the time to look at it and see that the Nomad actually does a really nice job. So if this video has been helpful to you, please give me that thumbs up and subscribe for more uh, content like this. I'll be making a lot more videos all about the Move Shoot Move Nomad, about Olympus cameras, general photography stuff. So thank you guys so much for your support and I'll see you on the next video. Now, one more time, let's listen to the beautiful words of the legend. Mr. Alan Wallace. And as always, if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck 
think for you guys.